Hey friends, <clears throat> today I wanted to talk with you about, let's see, about when we get troubled and we're disappointed. And I bet I'm not the only one that gets disappointed. I bet some of you out there do. So I wanted to start out by telling you John 14, 1 through 3. <clears throat> and I have a tickle. John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And that is Jesus talking. That makes me excited. I just wish when I got disappointed, I would focus on what he is doing and not what I wish he would be doing. Do you know what I mean? This first poem is called Once Again. God, what am I missing that I'm back here once again? Is it stubbornness inside? If not, what is it then? Purge the pride alive in me. Maybe then I'll finally be in a better place so I can trust you totally. The second poem is called My Struggle. God, I'm really struggling with learning to let go. My thoughts are all consuming, overriding all I know. I muster up my scraps of trust and hope they are enough. God, I need your strength today. This letting go is tough. I have two poems about disappointments and they're both called disappointments, but I'll tell you the first one. Here we go. I think of disappointments, Lord, how people let me down. They promised they would be with me, but no one stayed around. And as I think about my hurts, your spirit helped me see the night that you poured out your heart in dark Gethsemane. If anybody had the right to dwell on hurts and pain, it was you upon that cross bearing all our shame. And the second poem on disappointment says, Lord, I'm so discouraged. The plans I had fell through. I sit with disappointment and don't know what to do. I had my day all figured out. Most everything was planned, but nothing went the way I thought, and I don't understand. He answers with compassion. I know you are in pain. Just trust in me completely. Your loss will turn to gain. We do have the promise that God will work all things together for good. And I remember even in Joseph's life when he said, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. Joseph saw God working in his life when it could have been much, much worse than it was. I'm not saying he didn't struggle. I'm just saying God worked some wonderful things in his life. You need to read the story of Joseph. This next poem is called Keeping Score, and it is in He Whispers, Volume 3. <clears throat> Another disappointment has reared its ugly head, and I refuse I refuse to shrug it off, but write it down instead. Then later on, I take it out and think of all the pain and how God keeps allowing me to hurt and hurt again. I look around at others who seem to be so free. And so I try to figure out why life is hard for me until I go to Calvary and see my Savior's face, remembering how much he cares 
and how he showed me grace. Not only did he die for me as no one had before, but even though he had the right, he never did keep score. Are you struggling with disappointment? Do you feel like God has let you down? Did you have a loved one die that you prayed would live? If the answer is yes to any of these, I just implore you to trust in the one who always does what's good for you. Does it feel good? No. We're only seeing part of the picture, friends. He will work together for good things in our life. But sometimes we're looking at the backside of the tapestry where all the strings are together and we can't make out the picture at all. But God is working mightily, sometimes silently. A lot of times in the dark. He does his best work in the dark. That's where and when he created us. So we just need to learn what God's character is like so that when the hard times come and our questions don't have answers, that we can trust in the one who made us. We can trust in God Almighty who loves us more than anyone ever has and more than anyone ever will. We can trust him. He's worthy of our trust. And God is good. You hear people say that all the time. But God can be nothing less than good. It's what his character is. Oh, friends, let me pray for you. Because as I'm talking to you, I'm pretty sure that some of you are struggling. Because I've been struggling in one area. I just figure that you're just like me, and I'm just like you. So let's, let me pray for you. Father God, would you help us? Help us, Lord, when we struggle with disappointment, when we set our hearts on something and then it doesn't work out. When we pray for a family member, but we don't see any change. When our loved one's health is getting worse and not better. God, we live in a fallen world. So a lot of what we experience is the result of us living in a fallen world. And the enemy tries whispering to us, well, if God loved you, he wouldn't allow this. Friends, we can't listen to the enemy. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. There's no truth in him. But we can trust what the Bible says. Because God is the Lord God Almighty. And he says, I am God and there is none else. And when Satan tries telling us that God is not even aware of what's going on, we need to just throw ourselves into the Word of God and let the Lord, by His Holy Spirit, bring to remembrance the things we've seen God do in our lives. David encouraged himself in the Lord, and we can do the same. So Lord, I just pray that you would help us when we struggle. And we pray this in your son's precious and holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, friends, for joining me, and I will see you next time.